We are back with another bootcamp video. This is going to be market structure part two, plus a little bit more about fair value gaps. Okay, so in this video, we, we all understand how basic market structure works, hopefully. Okay, so basic market structure, an uptrend would look something like this, where we get higher highs and higher lows. Now, I'm going to go a little more in depth with what I prefer as market structure, and you're kind of just going to see a few different scenarios. So this would be an uptrend, and this would be a downtrend because we're creating lower lows and lower highs. All right, so that's very simple. Now, um, what is classified, or what do I prefer to see as an actual shift in structure? Okay, the best shift in structure will be one displacement, which is good displacement below last higher low. Okay, with a fair value gap combined with that. Okay, so this is what is going to be like good displacement. Okay, now a not so good displacement would be something like this. And um, more times than like there's going to be a lot more fails where we will see a fair value gap here. But if the displacement's very, very bad like this, that fair value gap will be traded back above and we will break it again. And you want to see a reversal. You want to see some sort of good displacement outside or below this low in order to trust it more. Okay, so that's kind of the first thing we're looking for with market structure and, and looking for some sort of reversal pattern. Okay, so this is good. This is bad. Now, don't get me wrong. You will still see some fair value gaps reject here, but it's not going to be as much as if we were to get good displacement below, and then retrace to a fair value gap. So that's kind of the first thing. The second thing is this. I'm going to, this is a little more advanced, but I'm going to draw kind of a, another uptrend here. Now, tell me what you notice about this. Okay, let me just, let me see if I can make this better. Okay, tell me tell me what you notice about this. Do you think that this right here is a market structure shift? The third's a fair value gap right here. I just want you to pause the video. Okay. Pause the video. Do you think we'd go up or down here? There's there's a couple different answers to this. All right. So pause the video. All right. So if you said we would go up here, good job. Now, based off of market structure shift, why might we go up here and not down? Well, here's the thing. There's two reasons. What, the first reason is this. Is this. In this example here, you can see that we're creating higher highs, which means what? Which means every high previously is where liquidity rests. There's going to be people getting stopped out here. Okay? Which means... People putting their stop loss above, like, imagine this could be London high, this could be high of day, this could be low of day, this could be high of day, this could, like, people love to put their stop losses above high day and below low of day. So if this is high day, there might be a lot of stop losses here. And as we keep going up, we're going to keep creating new high days, and people are like, oh, now I think we're going to dump. They get stopped out. Oh, now I think we're going to dump. They get stopped out because they keep putting it above high of day. Now, in this example, what do you notice? In this example, we are not taking out high of day. We get lower and lower each time. So we get lower here and lower here. So are stop losses truly being ran in this scenario? No. They're truly, 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 like this is a fact, being ran right here because we're trading above that high of day and people have their stop loss orders above this high. But in this example, we're not really stopping on anyone. So that's kind of the first reason. So... I'd expect us to still run those stop losses and go up there. The second reason has to do with market structure. So the best market structure shift, in my opinion, is when we take out a low that makes a new high. So what do I mean by this? What I mean by this is we need to take out the low that creates the high of day or creates a high. So this is high of day for the, for the time being. This is high of day. This is the higher low. But does this higher low put in a new high of day? Nope, this one does not. So if we were to displace under this 
low right here what I truly consider a market structure should. And some people would, some people wouldn't, but this is how I see it. I would not consider this a market structure shift. Now, for the one person in here who's like, oh, but what if it's an SMT? I have not taught you that yet. There's other more advanced things that maybe could mean this is a market structure shift. But like I said, this is a basic boot camp. We haven't gotten that far yet. But generally speaking, I would not consider this a market structure shift. Therefore, I could expect this to go up because I think the best market structure shifts are when we break below a low that actually made a new high. And in this example here, this low did not create a new high. Okay. An example would be like, let's see, this low right here. This low did not truly create a new high. I mean, the new high would probably be if we broke this high because it's so distinct. Like, yeah, if we, if we wicked up here and then we fell below this, then yeah, I'd consider this a market structure shift. But right now, if we did go below this, I wouldn't really trust it because this low did not really create a new major, major high. So if we did go below this, I wouldn't trust it. I like There's still a possibility we could go like this. So if we break that low that doesn't create a new high, I don't put as much meaning to it. Now, if we break the low that does create a new high, which you could see would be this one right here, okay? Because you can see this low creates high day. Then I would maybe consider a market structure shift when you would go down. So this is a lot more advanced, but you can see kind of how the they differ a little bit. Breaking that low that makes the new high versus breaking the low that doesn't make the new high. I think this is going to be a much more confident market structure shift. And this is going to be the much weaker one, which will work sometimes. Okay, so this is strong market structure shift, which again, the weak one will work sometimes, just so you know, but it's not as good, all right? Same thing with over here. You don't really have a market structure shift here because the, the low that made the new high of day or the new high is right here. And we never, we broke this low, we broke this low. So yeah, this might be a, a short-term market structure shift on like the 30 second time frame, but depending on what time frame we're on, it's not truly a market structure shift. Now, this is where it gets even more advanced. Okay. Let me see if I can explain this properly. All right. Let's see. Let's see here. So, in this example here, we create a low right here or higher low that makes a new i would say this is a pretty significant high all right now we create a low right here or a higher low because we made a lower low here and we break both these lows that made a new high now here's the deal this to me is not like this definitely would be considered a market structure shift to me because we made a new low or we broke a new low that broke the high but we still end up coming back into that for reality gap that was unbalanced why do we come up here because the market targets two things inefficiencies and highs and lows and at the time we only filled this inefficiency and the market still needed to fill this so that's why we come back up but here's the thing if i go to the five minute time frame okay this is i'm, I'm this might be confusing. I really hope I'm trying to explain this the best way possible. All right. If we ever get a five minute market structure shift, it tells us that we're going to the hourly, but it doesn't tell us that the hourly is going to be a shift. So if I go to the hourly right here, you can see I have this line. This is the hourly low. And I go to the let's and now I go to the one minute here. So we see the hourly low. Okay, this is the hourly low. We don't know if we're going to break it or not. Like, we don't know if it's going to be market structure shift. But if we go to the one minute time frame, we do have a one minute market structure shift. So, what does this mean? This means that because we have a market structure shift on the one minute time frame with a fair rally gap above, which we could short, this means. 
We are targeting the hourly low because we know there's going to be a bunch of stop loss under it. But because we're taking the market structure just based off of the one minute time frame, we're targeting an hourly low. We're not trying to guess saying, oh, this hourly is also going to be market structure shift. So we're going to assume that and we're going to target way down here instead because I'm going to gamble that this is going to become a market structure shift. No, that's not how we trade. If you are taking a market structure shift in the one minute time frame, you are not targeting past that hourly because we don't know if this is going to become a market structure shift. And you got to realize there's still an unbalanced for a rally up above. So this would be one of those examples where I know it gets pretty advanced, but you'd be targeting this and not trying to go past it because, like I said, we're taking a base out to one minute. Our entry is up here. We do not want to gamble a one minute market structure shift is also going to turn into an hourly down here. We want to take our profits there. This is good enough, and you don't need to go for home runs. This is a fine trade. Now, same thing right here. We got another market structure shift to the upside, okay? And we kind of, we don't get the cleanest. I mean, you kind of get a fair value gap here. It wasn't the cleanest. Um, and remember, stop loss to go below the low. So, stop loss below the low, and we target the next high. Now, same thing in this situation. This high is so distinct on the one minute that it's likely an hourly high. But are we going to target higher and be like, oh, this is going to turn into an hourly market structure shift? No. We're taking this trade based off the one minute. Therefore, we're not going to gamble that's going to be an hourly market structure shift. Okay. And that's kind of where aligning time frames come in a little bit. Okay. And you need to understand that. Now, this is probably going to conclude the video, but this is what I want to leave you with. And Market structure shift can get very advanced because of what I just said. And this goes very, very deep into many different time frames. Like, for example, if I go to the 15 second chart, again, a 15 second market structure shift, I might be targeting like a one minute high only. So let's say right here, we break structure. It's not an example. Like right here, we break structure here. I might only target this low. Okay. But you have to realize this low might be a one minute market structure shift but that gives us another opportunity to get back in the trade. So let's say this is a market structure shift in 15 seconds. I take the fair value. There's not really clean entry. Oh wait, there's right here, but this wasn't really clean entry. Um, I'm targeting the 15 second low, but then I see, Oh, this now, now this one minute turned into a market structure shift. Well, that's fine. I'm already out from the 15 second. I could re-enter again on the one minute if I wanted because now we it's confirmed that this is a market structure shift. So now I'm going to wait for another retrace and then get back in right here. So do you see how you're trying to base your target based off the time frame you take and you don't want to hold past that lower high because if I take a one minute play or a one minute market structure shift, remember, I am not going to try to gamble that there's going to be a higher time frame market structure shift. Where, where longer term traders are waiting for a market structure shift right where a five minute trader is waiting for a good market structure shift is usually my one minute target and five minute traders they'll be like oh one minute traders got in here great i'm going to try to go for a little bigger move and see if we get the same thing but under the five minute so we break it with a lot of displacement and then get a fair value gap and then reject it now in this example here we do get a fair value gap but what do you notice about this displacement? It's not good. So that's why this fair value got fails because this displacement sucks. If we got kind of what this orange line was showing, then yeah, probably would have worked. But like I said, a one minute trader is usually out where the five minute trader is waiting for a market structure shift. And it, it's a little smaller of a move, but remember, if you understand anything about risk management, you're still risking less. And again, a two R play on a one minute time frame is the same as a two hour play on a five minute time frame, right? It's the same, it's the same play. Just it's more points for the five minute because the five minute is going to move more, but it's still the same position sizing. It's still the same P and L. So the same profit. And you need to understand that. So this is a little more advanced, but remember a one minute 
market structure shift is usually targeting a five minute lower high where a five minute trader may be waiting for it to enter off of this, but will not always get it. So don't try to gamble off of a one minute shift that a five minutes also going to turn into a shift as well. You want to mainly take profit here where the five minute trader is waiting for that to become a shift. So that's kind of the advanced market structure and FEG lesson for this video. Um, again, it can get a little more advanced, but I think that's about as far as I'll go for now. And now, how are you going to learn more? Well, you're going to take what I just learned and do some experimenting, do some back testing. And the next two or three years, you're going to see this yourself and you're going to learn that and you're going to learn what I just said, but you're going to see it with your own eyes. And that's how you're going to learn. Not me. Your one video is not going to help you, but I'm opening up your eyes to you for this, for you to now go in thinking about it to the next two or three years and get that screen time. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. And without further ado, I will be leaving. Have a great night, evening, morning, wherever you are. And uh, yeah, peace.